motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Motion made by Coleman, properly seconded by Sims. Any discussion? All in favor to say a motion, let me know say an aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. And it is unanimous. All right, public comment? None this evening. All right. All right, at this time, let's remain. We're going to remain seated. We're going to try this a little bit different. Let's remain seated for our moment of silence, and then we're going to invite up uh, our student to come up for the Pledge of Allegiance. So let's take a few moments for a moment of silence, and then we'll stand for the pledge. Okay, thank you. At this time, we're going to have Britton Ellison to come up and lead us. She's an eighth grader at Long Middle School. She's going to come lead us in our plague. So would you stand with us as she leads us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. All right, we're certainly going to take a few moments and welcome our visitors uh, to our board meeting tonight, our SRO, uh, Mr. McQueen. Uh, thank you for being with us tonight. The, I think the Link newspaper is back there somewhere. Oh, to the side. Good to have you with us uh, as well, uh, as well as our administrators. Uh, also got our attorney and our auditor. Uh, got a lot of folks with us tonight, so we certainly welcome each of you. Normally not a good night to have them here, but we're glad to have you <laughs> anyway. Okay, board members, you've been given the minutes uh, for the January 8th meeting prior to the meeting. Hear no objection. They will be deemed approved by consent, and it is unanimous. All right, at this time, we'll have our financial report by our chief financial officer, Mr. Kasky, uh, who is also going to bring up our auditor. Uh, so we welcome you tonight. All right. Mr. Chairman, Dr. Hale, members of the board, good evening. Good evening. Uh, prior to this evening, you all were provided with the financial review for the month of December. Any questions related to the review? Any questions? Okay, hear none. All right. Uh, this evening we are joined by our auditor, Mr. Harris Darver from Darver Kelly, and he's going to present the audit report for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2023. Hello. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you for having me tonight. I'm um, going to proceed with, I believe y'all have all had a draft copy or a copy of the financial report, but I'm going to go through some highlights for you today. Um, the audit team was made up of myself, Harris Sarver, the engagement partner, um, based out of Greenville, South Carolina. I've been doing school district audits for over 15 years, um, as well as Leslie Kelly, my business partner, serves as a quality control partner where she serves in an independent capacity to review the file and audit work to make sure that it meets, meets standards. Our on-site and on-site engagement staff was led by Kirk Spots. We began our audit with preliminary field work in August of 23, conducting the main audit field work in October and November, um, issuing on December, 5th, December 14th and submitting to the Department of Ed and the Federal Audit Clearinghouse. Um, that December 14th date is considered delinquent for the state's December 1 deadline. However, they don't instill any penalties on that until a 30 and 60 day window has surpassed. So while the December 1 deadline is written into state law, um, there is no penalties for submitting December 14th. And that was just additional time given the nature of the audit deficiencies that we had that we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, I'm not going to read to you too much, but this is one paragraph, which is our auditor's opinion paragraph that I will read. Um, and it's based off of the audit that we audited the financial statements as of and for the year ended June 30th, 23. And in our opinion, the financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the district as of June 30th, 23, and the respective changes in financial position for the year then ended in accordance with, generally, with accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America. In the back of your audit, there is a summary uh, of our auditor's results. Um, this is a quick highlight of that page. Um, it's split into two sections, the first being related to the financial statements and the second being related to federal awards. Um, as we start to get into some deficiencies, you'll see some overlap of the numbers being repeated. This is just due to how they have to be presented for audit standards. 
Um, looking at the financial statements, as I mentioned before, we issued an unmodified opinion. In performing our audit, we're required to evaluate and test specific internal controls that would have a relation over financial reporting. And we did find a material weakness there, as well as significant deficiencies and two matters of noncompliance. You'll see, um, as I mentioned before, that repeated number, 2023-001, which we'll look at in more detail. But that was an internal control finding that also had noncompliance aspects to it. Um, as it relates to federal awards, you'll see at the bottom, we audited the Title I program, the ESSER program, as well as Improving Teacher Quality State Grant. Um, with those programs, we issued an adverse and unmodified opinions, issuing an adverse opinion on the ESSER funds and an unmodified opinion on Title I and Improving Teacher Quality State Grants. The deficiencies that we identified there are 2023-01 and 03, which were listed above under the non-compliance section, as well as significant deficiency 2023-002. Looking at the first finding um, was related to internal controls surrounding claim reconciliation and reimbursement process. I'm not going to read all of the language that's listed here because y'all have had an opportunity to look at it, but um, for every finding we're required to depict criteria um, which is what is the rules in place, the condition is what's the condition that led to the finding, the cause, the effect, and our recommendation. So listed here under criteria is that the federal government requires entities to establish and maintain effective internal controls over the federal awards, um, as well as the State Department of Education as the pass-through entity requires that all claims for expenditures be reported and claimed by August 15th deadline. Um, the finding and condition that was depicted is that the district failed to reconcile their expenditures timely and file their claims by the August 15th deadline. I say that to say that the district did get approval from the state to file those delinquent. However, they were delinquent. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that one more uh, in the future. 2023-03, I am going to jump around from numbers just because they are presented and how they're presented in that summary auditor schedule, but this one is related to non-compliance with wage rate requirements. Uh, once again, the criteria for this is that federal government requires uh, construction projects that are funded with federal dollars to abide by the wage rate requirements, which is a two-fold process. The first being that there's provisions in your contracts regarding that the contractor will abide by the wage rate requirements. And second, that weekly uh, certified payrolls will be provided to the district um, prior to payment so that they can certify that the contractor did pay at the appropriate prevailing wage rates. Um, in our audit, we noted that the district, uh, certain contracts did not have the required language, as well as it was not the district's practice at the time to receive those weekly certified payrolls prior to paying those contractors. And feel free to stop me at any moment if you have questions. I've got some breaks throughout that you can. 2023-004 is related to internal controls surrounding the recording and reconciling of P-card transactions. Once again, standard generally accepted accounting principles require governments or the district to accrue expenditures in the period in which they incur. Um, district had failed to properly record and reconcile certain P-card transactions predominantly held through one department that were out there listing as pending and those need to be posted to the district's ledgers. Going into the internal control deficiencies um, related to the major programs, I'm not going to repeat the ones that we've go already gone over, but 2023-01 is repeated here as it's specifically related to the ESSER and IDEA programs. 2023-02 we have not gone over yet. This one is specifically related to the ESSER program, and it sp states internal controls over compliance with documentation of personnel expenses. Um, federal requirements require that personnel paid under federal dollars are required to maintain certain documentation of their acknowledgement of those salaries and wages being paid to them. Uh, in our testing, we noted that the district did not appropriately reflect those actual federal awards for which district employees were paid under those federal dollars. That was due to predominantly the use of pre-filled forms where they were pulling an old form from years ago out of their drawer, filling out their time information, signing it. Later, it was classified as a federal salary, and thus the, two, the form didn't notate that it was a federal salary. 2023-003, we spoke about before, related to the wage rate requirements on construction contracts. Oh, sorry, 
and then questions. So those are the four findings that we had this year. I know I flew through those really fast, but I, my understanding was that y'all have had an opportunity to review this audit report in length and detail. Um, I'm going to go into the financial numbers and everything uh, on the next set of slides, but I did want to pause here if there were any questions related to the findings. Okay, so we'll pause for questions. Any board members have any questions? Dr. Coleman? Yes, with, with the findings, you said that you had to do we have these income controls in place, or if we did have, we just didn't follow it? So when we notated a, a finding, uh, immediately the client or district in this case is required to respond with a corrective action plan. All of these findings have been corrected at this point in time. During the course of the audit, we found that these processes weren't in place or they weren't being performed as they were intended to be performed. But as of today's date, they ha all have been corrected. Mr. Sweeney, you good. good? Any other board members? Okay, we'll move to the financials. Absolutely. Um, as I've noted in previous years, the district reports financial information on two different sets of financials. Um, the first being the statement of net position, statement of activities. This is the district as a whole that includes short and long-term items. Those long-term items include debt and capital assets as well as pension and OPEB liabilities. So this is looking at the district as a whole. Total assets representing $90.5 million, cash investments of 13.8 with capital assets of 49 million. Deferred outflows of resources predominantly related to pension and OPEB of 35.5 million. Liabilities of over 200 million with debt representing 31 million and pension and OPEB liabilities of 159 million. Deferred inflows of resources, once again related to pension and OPEB liabilities of 30 million leaving a negative net position of $105 million. Of that negative 105 net investment in capital assets represents approximately 18 million, and that is the value of your capital assets less related, less any related debt, um, as well as restricted net position of 16.5 million and a negative unrestricted net position of 140.5. Talk about negative net position as I've done in previous years. I try to depict out four districts the amount of their negative net position that's directly directly attributable to the pension and OPEB liability. That represents just under $154 million for the district. Removing that liability to see your true operations, you'd be at just under $50 million of a positive net position. If you recall back in 2016 and 17, government accounting standards required the districts to start to report their pension and OPEB liabilities. This is the presentation of that and the impact. Looking at the general fund, this is now we're removing all of the long-term items. So capital assets are removed, long-term debt is removed. This is looking at the district's operations in the general fund. Looking at the balance sheet of just under $23 million, cash investments of just under 13. Liabilities of $9 million, where 8 million of that represents summer salary accruals. Deferred inflows of resources related to district's deferred portions of their tax revenues of $640,000, leaving a positive fund balance of $13.4 million, unassigned fund balance of $10.7 million. Revenues for the current year in the general fund were just under $65 million, with just under 16 coming from local tax revenues and 46 coming from state sources. District expenditures in the general fund represent $67 million, with 39.9 going towards instruction and 27.5 towards support services. Other financing sources, which predominantly include transfers from the Education Improvement Act, the state aid from districts, represent $6 million, leaving a positive net change in fund balance of just under $3 million. Any questions there? Any questions for board members? Mr. Sweeney? <coughs> What is your recommendation in terms of a fund balance for a district like ours? Next slide here. <laughs> um, Act 23 and uh, 20, gosh, the dates are now slipping me, 2018, I believe. The state passed Act 23, which put into part um, some fiscal compliance standards, one of which is maintaining one month's worth of operating expenditures in your unassigned fund balance. That percentage equates to 8.33%. You're sitting right now at just double that at 15.85%. Um, 
I don't, I try not to give a lot of recommendations as it relates to the use of fund balance or what the target percentage is because it changes by every district. I will say that looking at the next five years from now, as we see the roll off of ESSER funds go away and all of the deferred maintenance that ESSER was able to pay for, that cycle will repeat itself in probably three to five more years. There's not gonna be a bucket of funding like ESSER from that, so I do recommend the districts to be on the lookout and be planning for that. I know I've talked to Mr. Kasky before about what that outlook looks like as we start to look into the next three to five years or seven years from now um, as those ESSER funds roll. So unfortunately, I can't directly answer your question. There are districts in the state that are well over 40%. There's districts that are barely meeting the 8.3%. They're barely meeting the 8. What was the last? Percent? Excuse me. What was the barely meeting the 8% requirement? Okay. And y'all are sitting at 15.85 uh, for FY23. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay. That concludes my presentation. If there's no other questions, I'll let uh, Mr. Cascade present any other information he might have related to the audit as well as I'm here if there's any other questions. And I will say, I didn't have any because we have actually met for about an hour yes. uh, on this audit. So uh, I do appreciate all the time that, that you put into it. I appreciate the, um, the the team, the finance team as well for the efforts that go into it. I know it's a lot of work. Um, we certainly appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, you know, we work with all members of the department, uh, all members of the district office are helping and assisting get us the information that we need to conduct the audit. Mr. Cassie has a great staff up there that's done a great job to you know, make sure that we can complete the audit and get the information that we need. So I appreciate his help and support in doing so. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have unless there's any other questions. Any other questions, Mr. Cassie? Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you. All right. This time we'll call on our chief of personnel, uh, Dr. Hazard, for our personnel report. Uh, and then our attorney will be joining her as well at the podium to go over some policies. Dr. Hale, Mr. Chairman, and members of the board at this time, I would like to recommend the following exhibits for your approval, exhibits A through F. So moved. Second motion. Motion been made by Coleman, properly seconded by Sweeney. Any discussion? All in favor of the said motion, let normal saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. And it is unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. At this time, we're going to have Ms. Story with White and Story join me at the podium. It's good to have you with us tonight. It's good to be here, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dr. Hale. Uh, you do have for your review several policies tonight. The ones that I'm really here to speak about are the Title IX policies. As you all well probably know, Title IX is a federal law that prohibits sexual harassment in the education system, both for staff members and for students. So there were some revisions made to this um, law several years ago. We want to come into compliance with those by adopting, at least reading these policies tonight. I will go ahead and give you a little bit of a teaser. There may be more changes coming up very soon. We've been notified by the government that they are looking into adding some more stuff to our regulations. So we do have proposed policies for both staff and students. These would go into effect, of course, once you finally approve them. And um, we are providing training for all members of staff of the district, working with Dr. Hazard's office to do that. So I will entertain any questions about these policies. Okay, Dr. Hazard's gonna, I think, go through each one, yes. uh, and then we can ask questions at that time. Policy JIAA, sexual harassment and retaliation for students. The district will not tolerate sexual harassment of students in the education program or any district activity, nor retaliation against someone who has made a report or filed a complaint alleging sexual harassment. Okay, we entertain a motion for that policy. So moved, uh, second. Motion has been made by DUSA, properly seconded by Sweeney. Any discussion? Any questions? Okay. Right, hearing here, number we'll call for the vote. All in favor of the said motion, let normal say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. And it is unanimous. Policy GBEBE, -E, Gavin's Law Sexual Extortion Staff. The district prohibits any staff, student, or third parties from engaging in any behavior that will satisfy the definition of sexual extortion or aggravated sexual extortion as described in state law and retaliation against someone who has made a report or filed a complaint alleging sexual extortion. So this is a revision, correct? This is new. 
there's a brand new law that um, one of our legislators just put into place. Gavin was his son who went through a sextortion incident, committed suicide, and so the law does now require us to adopt this new policy. Okay, we'll the policy number again, please. G B E B E. Okay. Gavin's law. Yeah. Okay, we understand a motion. I move that we approve the policy G B E B E. The motion has been made by Sweeney, properly seconded by Dusa. Any questions? All in favor of the said motion, let me say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. And it is unanimous. The next one, JICFB, is Gavin's Law as well for students. <clears throat> I entertain a motion. Second. Motion made by Dusa, properly seconded by Dr. Chapman. Any discussion? All in favor of the said motion, let me know by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. It is unanimous. Okay. The next two are revisions. I had dropped down, I'm sorry. No worries. <laughs> Policy GBAA, sexual discrimination and harassment staff. The district will not tolerate sexual harassment in the workplace or educational setting, nor retaliation against someone who has made a report or filed a complaint alleging sexual harassment. This policy also provides for non-discrimination on the basis of race, religion, sex, color, disability, age, genetic information, gender, national origin, or any other applicable status protected by federal, state, or local law. Okay, we can sign a motion. Second. Second. This has made the motion. Mr. Sweeney is properly <laughs> seconded. Any questions? All in favor of said motion, let me know by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. It is unanimous. Policy J.I., Students' Rights and Responsibilities. The district will afford all students privileges and rights without regard to race, religion, sex, creed, disability, or national origin. Okay, we'll entertain a motion. So move. Coleman has made the motion for J.I., properly seconded by Dr. Chapman. Any discussion? All in favor say a motion, let me know say an aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. It is unanimous. Next, we have some new administrative <coughs> rules for your information. JIAA-R, Sexual Harassment and Retaliation Students. This rule outlines the procedures that will be used to address reports of sexual harassment and retaliation as it relates to students. Okay, we understand a motion. So moved. Nope, I think these are actually for um, just for information. Just for your information. I apologize. Yes, sir. Got a lot down here tonight. I know. <laughs> the All next, right, go ahead. Go with the next one, please. The next one is J I A A E, sexual harassment formal complaint form, and G B A A E, sexual harassment complaint form. That would be for students and staff. Okay, thank you. To file those complaints. Finally, we have a revision of an administrative rule, GBAA-R, sexual discrimination and harassment, and this rule outlines the procedures that will be used to address reports of sexual harassment and retaliation as it relates to staff. Yeah. Now, are there any questions? Appreciate your work on that, too. I know that's been a lot of work, and I um, certainly appreciate our attorney being here as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, at this time we'll call Ms. Stubbs for our curriculum report, our chief academic officer. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Hale, and members of the board. Um, there's several departments in our um, from curriculum that I'd like to highlight. The first is our fine arts program. Um, there are several major productions going on in the district. Um, Chesterfield Ruby Middle School just performed Oz, a pop parody, on February 7th, which was which was absolutely fabulous. New Heights Middle School will be performing Oz on March 28th. Chesterfield High School will be performing Junie B. Jones, the musical, on April 25th. And Central High School will be performing The Wizard of Oz, April 25th through the 27th. So lots of exciting productions going on. Um, the last week of February is our intercession week. Um, and during this week, teachers will be providing engaging lessons for students that are in third, fourth, and fifth grades. Um, we will have certified teachers at those five sites. Um, breakfast and lunch will be served, and we will have transportation for those students. 
Yes, sir. <clears throat> when you identify your students, what kind of participation do we get? With, uh, with the students that are identified, do, do we get 100%, 80% that actually participate in this, what we call catch-up session? Well, um, we have right now, each of our sites has about 30 to 50 students <laughs> that they have asked to come. Um, the first time we did it in, you know, in, in October, um, we, we, weren't ex we weren't full, but we did have, some, have good participation. We are hoping um, that we will also have, you know, students that will come this time. Um, we do have really good participation in summer school. So um, this will be our first time in February. Um, with our third, fourth, and fifth graders, but the teachers have some really great lessons planned, so we do hope that, that we'll have good it's attendance. It's not required that they come? No, it is not required, just um, encouraged. But we do contact the parents oh, to yes, make sure yes. they're there. Um, principals have made um, phone calls to parents, they've gotten letters, um, and they have you know, been encouraged to attend. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, School improvement, um, all of our schools came in and met for um, progress monitoring. Um, and so um, I've listed some of the highlights from um, two of our schools that came in for you to see. Um, some of the great things that they are doing at their schools. Um, with technology, um, certified teachers um, have received or will be receiving new laptops during second semester. We're very excited about that. Um, and those new laptops will assist in providing high quality and up-to-date uh, technology support for teachers um, and, and, and students. Um, we are also working on a vetting, uh, digital resource and app vetting policy. Um, that's been a work in progress and we're going to continue that work um, this semester. Um, with our EOCs, we've been really working on getting some benchmarks in place for our high school um, teachers for those EOC classes. Um, and this was a group that met in January um, and they will meet again. Um, and so um, these benchmarks will be used next year as a pre-assessment. And we'll have a, a pacing guide laid out next year for those teachers. So um, we're excited about that work. Um, textbook adoption is going on. Um, we had a great representation at the um, caravan. We had many of our, um, all of our grades were, were represented there, and teachers are undergoing that process of reviewing our ELA curriculum. Um, and once we have our, our choices for elementary and secondary, then we will bring that to you um, for your approval in March. Um, and then the last thing is that a um, lot going on with our multi-language learners. Um, January 2nd, Matby Elementary and Matby High School had their second parent university meeting with nearly 70 people attending. And the purpose of this meeting was to assist our immigrant families as they navigate the school system. So um, that's been new this, this year and we're very excited about that turnout um, with those sessions. Any questions? Yes. Okay. Oh, I haven't seen any virtual school data in a while for us. By school, pass fail, by ethnicity. I haven't seen it in I asked about a while back. Okay, um, we will get that to you. We just had our second um, registration for virtual school, um, and we will um, we can get that to you in the next week or so. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Just one last question. Go ahead. I noticed you in your report you got seating time requirement. We have a problem with uh, students missing more than five days. Um, yes, we've had to go back and make some uh, adjustments with that and make sure that everybody is in compliance with with the law. Um, and so, with seat time, you know, the the students have to actually be physically in the classroom. Um, if they are not, and if they miss those days, then there are opportunities for them to make up seat time, whether it be during lunchtime, on Saturday school, or even after school. Um, so, so yes, we've got some information going out um, to parents to remind everybody that we have to be in compliance with, with the law and to make sure that everybody is um, in their schools. And that's coming up in just a minute. Yes. Okay. okay. Any other questions? All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, great job on that report. We appreciate it.
All right, y'all are not seeing strange things uh, up to our table, uh, but Dr. Hale is our assistant superintendent. Well, you may be. <laughs> Dr. Hale is our assistant superintendent, uh, and um, Dr. Anderson is out sick tonight, uh, so we're certainly uh, wishing him well uh, tonight as, as he is recovering and will be out for a couple days uh, sick. So at this time, we're going to turn it over to our assistant the superintendent, Dr. Hale. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the board. Um, so last month, our employees voted on two Okay, so there is some discussion I believe we need to have probably unless there is a motion that needs to be put on the floor, um, or would you like, guys like to discuss it? Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to bring up a couple of points here. Uh, I recognize that the vote is um, pretty close, and I believe it's been close for the last two or three years, but I don't think it's been this close, 249 to 240 votes. How many employees do we have uh, in this district? We have close to 900, a thousand, mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. Less than half being voted for. Uh, I guess the question is, is that with it being this close, with an A group and a B group, I feel like to me we need to have some kind of mediation here. We need to get a representative from one group to another one to see if we can reach some kind of conclusion of where we can get a majority of the vote on this. This thing is really close. This thing is splitting right down the middle. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer a motion that we table the discussion and we'll put the discussion. Okay, so a motion is on the floor of the table. Is there a second? I second that motion. So we can have further discussion if we need it, but. At this time, Dr. Coleman has made the motion and Dr. Chapman has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Uh, well, there has been a quite a lot of discussion uh, going on about these yes. two calendars back and forth. Uh, just, just to highlight a few uh, uh, things is the February week uh, that the students will be off and the teachers will be off. Uh, on option one is a solid week and then option two is a broke up week and so there's a lot of discussion uh, on the fact that we sold this calendar a year ago uh, with those two solid weeks and then there's some concern about breaking up the week. That's probably some of the main concerns uh, that are being brought to the board. Um, but other than that, we do have a motion to table it until next meeting. All right. So at this time, I'll go ahead and call for the vote. All in favor of the said motion, let me know say aye. Uh, All opposed? And it's unanimous. Okay. So it's tabled. All right. Uh, also, Mr. Chairman and board members, you've been given a policy, uh, JE, for, on student attendance. Policy JE attendance aligns our attendance policy with State Department guidelines. Okay, so this is a revision for board policy JE. Uh, this was some of what Ms. Stubbs was talking about and what you mentioned, uh, Mr. Sweeney, in the curriculum report. So this time we entertain a motion for the revision. So moved. Motion made by Deuce, the proper second by Dr. Chapman. Any discussion? All in favor of the said motion, that number saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. And it is unanimous. All right, we'll go for the super okay. report. All right, so um, you've already heard Ms. Stubbs talk about intercession week, but uh, so February 26th through March the 1st is the intercession week, uh, except for those folks who will be attending uh, classes during that time frame. There is no school. And uh, March 1st, as a reminder, is an in-service day. Uh, we work late on January the 11th and 18th, so we get that as a flex day. Just for yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you filling in tonight. All right. Okay. Under Chairman's comments, um, so last month the board uh, turned the Sherrill High School incident over to the Chester County Sheriff's Department. Uh, the sheriff has concluded his report. Uh, board members, you have been given the report uh, that has been provided to you. Our attorneys has looked at it and made some redactions to the report. 
because uh, now that it is a closed case, uh, that information is uh, public knowledge at this time or made available to the public. But I want to highlight some of the, the things that are going on. And, and first of all, I want to say thank you to the Sheriff's Department for um, the time that they spent. Uh, they went through and did an, a timeline of, of everything that took place in Sherrill High School uh, when we had the intruder uh, incident. Uh, they did a very thorough job, and so we certainly want to appreciate our sheriff uh, and, and the job that, that they did in that. But since that has taken place, uh, our superintendent has, has definitely been uh, being proactive and getting some things done. And so we set up the Sherrill PAL, uh, which is the parent administrator and law enforcement safety uh, team. Uh, and they have been meeting uh, on a regular basis. Uh, and so a few things that came out of that meeting uh, just Thursday, February the 8th, that I just want to share with the public uh, is that the Shaw Area Schools um, are all Alice trained or will be trained in the fall. Uh, and there's, some of them are going to have a refresher uh, coming along as well. Uh, they were all trained, excuse me, in the fall, and they had a refresher training in, in January. Uh, the new weapons detectors, uh, many of you board members know that we did go ahead and, and spend some capital funds and purchase weapons detectors, which are a lot different than metal detectors. Um, uh, weapons detectors, more uh, students can pass through at one time, and it's actually looking for, for weapons instead of just metal uh, objects that may be like earrings and those type of things that may go off. So uh, you can actually get a lot more students through at one time, uh, and so they're, they're a lot better. And they are actually, uh, they have arrived. Uh, and so um, training is taking place for those uh, new weapons detectors uh, at this time. Uh, Dr. King also shared uh, during that meeting that the student handbook has been looked at to address any additional needs uh, that we may need for elementary, middle, and, and high schools. Uh, so uh, we certainly, again, want to thank uh, the Shaw area, the people that's been uh, being a part of that meeting and if you want to be a part and you want your voice heard uh, that's a good opportunity is when they have those uh, meetings uh, to attend the Sherrill Powell safety uh, meetings and let your voices be heard. All right board members um, we'll remind you that the SCSBA annual conference is this weekend uh, February 15th through the 18th. I think uh, Ms. Kuhn has put a packet uh, for you if you plan on going I think we're the warmest place at your station uh, tonight. Uh, we are going to scratch off the property sale. We are not ready to make a recommendation on that property sale at this time. Uh, also, I uh, just want to remind you, we do this every year, but somebody normally forgets it. March the 30th uh, is the deadline to submit your South Carolina Statement of Economic Interest, uh, and they will get you, trust me. Uh, March 11th will be our next board meeting uh, right here at the Paramount Learning Center, executive session at 5, uh, and then the regular meeting at 5.30. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion been made by Dr. Coleman, seconded by Mr. Dusa. All in favor of said motion, let me know I'm saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, and it is unanimous. All right, thank you again for attending. We appreciate it. <laughs>